congruence for modular arithmetic has this notation. It's being read as A is congruent to B modulo M, and by definition, this implies that M divides A minus B. To picture this out, let's have these examples. Say 12 is congruent to 4 modulo 8. And this is true since 8 divides 12 minus 4. Similarly, 7 is congruent to negative 5 modulo 6 considering that 6 divides the difference of 7 and negative 5. With the same idea, negative 3 is congruent to negative 23 modulo 10 knowing that 10 divides the difference of negative 3 and negative 23. I got some raw videos about solving for the congruence, like if you want to know how to solve for this congruence, such as 83 is congruent to what number modulo 5, then have the suggested video. In that suggested video, we would know how to get that specific number that would be congruent to 83 modulo 5, whereas in this video, we would learn the general way in getting the other possible sets of answers in a given congruence. But before we go to that, let's have these labels. Let's have A for this number, B for this number, and M for this number. Now, a way to know what B is, we just have to subtract M from A. When we say 12 is congruent to what modulo 8, that would be 12 minus 8, which gives us 4. Now, notice that from that 4 as their answer, if we keep on subtracting 8 from the recent answer, these numbers would still be congruent to 12. Observe by definition, this would really be true because 8 divides 12 minus negative 12, which is a positive 24, and so as 12 minus a negative 20, which is a positive 32. Aside from subtracting 8, we can actually add 8, and so 12 plus 8 would give us 20. Continuously adding 8 would give us 28, 36, and so on. And this would satisfy the definition. Notice that 8 really divides 12 minus 20, which is negative 8. 8 also divides 12 minus 28, which is negative 16. Lastly, 8 also divides 12 minus 36, which is negative 24. So let's generalize the algorithm in getting the values for b. b will not just be equal to a plus or negative k, but this would actually be b equals a plus mk, where k would be an element of the set of integers that would be 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. So for us to know the values that would satisfy 7 modulo 20, this would actually be the equivalence class of 7. That is, the values for c would satisfy 7 plus 20k, where k would be equal to 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and so on. So notice that when k is equal to 0, we have here the element 7. When k is equal to 1, we have here 27. When k is equal to negative 1, we have a negative 13. And having the rest of k, we'll have these numbers. And like what we did earlier, to have these numbers, it's either adding or subtracting 20 from 7. Like 7 plus 20 gives us 27, plus 20 gives us 47. Having the other side this time would be 7 minus 20 gives us negative 13, minus 20 gives us negative 33, and so on. To be clear, 12 is really congruent to 12 modulo 15. This is because 15 divides 12 minus 12, which is 0. And by definition of divisibility, this means that 0 can be written as 15 times an integer. And in this case, that would be 0. For the benefit of others, when we say 5 divides 15, that means that 15 can be written as 5 times an integer, in this case, 3. A 
All right, so going back to the equivalence class of B, it means that all possible answers for B would be of this form. Considering now our example earlier, the equivalence class of 12 in module 8 will have these possible answers. That means 12 can be written as 20, and 20 can also be written as 4 because they are equivalent. And having all these numbers belonging in the same equivalence class, the idea is that we can substitute one to the other. That is, we can replace 12 by 20, 20 by negative 12, negative 12 by negative 20, and any element in this equivalence class. Since we can substitute one from the other in an equivalence class, you might think that equivalence or congruence is the same thing as equality. Well, they do have similar properties such as this. Notice that the first part here is like the reflexive property of equality. The second part here is like the addition property of equality. The third part and the fourth part would actually look like the multiplication property of equality. The fifth part would be whatever you subtract at the left side should be subtracted as well at the right side. Sixth part would be transitivity and the seventh part would be symmetry. With these properties, you might think that we can actually solve the congruence 8x congruent 4 modulo 15. Like, what should the x be? Well, the algorithm in solving this linear congruence will be discussed in a separate video. I hope to see you there. <laughs>